So here is my real ranking in the world when just about everyone attempts this stage. So a um, F1 champion, I think, I forgot his name, set a world record on this stage, Brad B. And then Jimmy Broadbent drove this stage and didn't get the world record, but beat the, um, the champion driver in a different game. And then because of those videos, everyone is posting their times for the stage. And this is the best I could do in about 20 minutes or so. Maybe I could gain a few seconds. I, I don't see myself gaining 19 seconds, though. That's pretty insane. Their top people must be very, very good. Um, so on to the replay. I haven't done a snow stage yet. Let's see if I can change the camera view. This one. I'm going to do both interior view and exterior view. This is a very sloppy drive. So the main takeaway is gearing the car so that it can reach top speed and then having adequate gear spacing from first to fifth to accommodate that top speed. And really, since Sweden is the only snow rally, you don't need multiple setups for the snow. Maybe it, you might gain an advantage on a shorter stage, but I'm pretty sure all the stages have a really high top speed um, somewhere. So if you're doing a rally, you're gonna need the top speed. So for these bumps, I'm dabbing the brake before the bump. So what that does is it causes the car to slow down, which causes the nose to dive while slowing down. And then I'm getting back on throttle right before the bump after, as I come off the gas, so that it lifts the front end over the bump so that the, the car clears the bump nose high and lands nose high. And you don't want to land nose high, really. Uh, you want to land perfectly flat, but landing a little bit nose high is better than landing in a full nose dive. So I'm, I'm trying to manipulate the car on the ground for the takeoff, so that when the car takes off the ground, it is controlled in a controlled manner. I'm in the wrong gear here. I could have gained a couple seconds down this straight if I had shifted to fourth. So pay attention to these bumps. Dab the brake and then full throttle. Dab the brake, full throttle, and steer for this one. Could be faster. We'll probably take it flat out with a slight brake dab. And I got on the brakes a little bit early here. Wasn't sure where to brake. So in about 20 minutes of driving the stage, I memorized the stage. I mean, it's, there's no way of getting around it. I'm going to be memorizing every stage that I drive. Um, even if I just do a quick rally. It's not like you can get infinite number of stages, so you can't just always drive a new stage. So at some point, in playing this game, whoever is playing the game, they're going to memorize the stages. It's just going to happen. I'm still topping out. And I noticed, I don't know if it's limited in the snow rally, but the, the top gear ratio is different than what I remember, at least at the Mexico stage. So I don't know if it's the snow rally or if they changed the whole transmission. But I can't achieve the top speeds I was capable of previously. And I'm gonna check the Mexico stage after this video to see if the gearing has changed at, at the gravel stages as well as on the snow stages. And I'll explain further when I go to the setup page at the end of the video. And now the exterior car view. Oops. 
So the bump stops don't seem to be high enough. The car clips into the ground when the car bottoms out. Which I'll explain the suspension when I get to it. But it's similar to my gravel settings. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the same except for the gearing as the gravel settings that I currently run but have not made a video on. Tires are so skinny. So watching this replay back, this is my first first time watching a exterior view of this car going on the stage. I think the suspension is not stiff enough for the hard hits. So I have it tuned specifically for, it's the same settings as uh, the El Chocolate Rally Stage settings, the suspension that is. But um, this stage has a lot of harder hits from landings and just general bumps like that. And I'm curious of whether to change the damper or the spring. Generally, for absorbing hits, you want to have a lot of damper, but this doesn't have dual stage dampers. It only has a single stage damper. So I have to make a compromise of whether I want it to be compliant for regular bumps or absorbative, I don't know if that's a word, of large hits from landings and just general big bumps. Oh, clip the fence there. And now the settings. Alright, so I have this S1 setting. I don't have any other options right now because I don't think I need to for Sweden. I could do a shorter gearing possibly. I don't think there's any advantage to changing the gearing for the Sweden stages. But anyway, let's get on to this, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the overview of this, is another suspension, but the settings. I'm rambling here. Let's go on. All right, suspension front. Oh, let's move that. Let's go front. Rear, differential, front, center, rear, brakes, and transmission. All right, first the suspension. I changed this from the lowest setting of two, uh, was it? Uh, 
25,000, yeah, 25,000. used to be at the lowest setting of 25,000. I've increased it to 3,000, or 30,000, sorry. And I've reduced the compression damper so that it has more support, has the actually higher ride, ride, ride height uh, because of the stiffer spring and the, the same ground clearance setting it actually raises the ride height with the stiffer spring. And then I have it uh, have a softer damper so it absorbs the hits better. But to compensate for the stiffer spring, I need more rebound damping. So it's not going to stick to the, the usual approximately double the compression damping of the re uh, sorry the rebound is co approximately double the compression. It actually is more this time because of the way I have the suspension tuned with a stiffer spring and a softer compression damper. Um, and that's basically explaining that. Uh, possibly for this stage, I can go with stiffer springs, and that if I increase the spring stiffness, I'd want to increase the shock absorber rebound, or possibly just adjusting the compression shock absorber, increasing that for the harder hits, but keeping the springs softer, or generally softer. Anyway, onto the transmission. So. At Mexico, in, at uh, the El Chocolate stage, maximum fifth gear ratio, or the, sorry, the smallest ratio? I don't know how this, this is a like reverse, anyway, I think. Anyway, the maximum speed ratio for fifth gear at the El Chocolate stage in my previous video was 0 0.8, I think. Either 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. The maximum here at Sweden is 1.2. I cannot change fifth gear any higher for more top speed. And so to compensate for that, I've changed the final gear ratio to a, l a lower setting. So this would be shorter gear ratio. This is a longer gear ratio. Um, and then I've just adjusted these settings to approximately what suits fifth gear here. And I'm thinking of changing these a little bit. This is fine. So what is that? So this was six, five, change it to seven, change it to two, and three. Yeah, it's fine. This is more even, this is perfectly even gear spacing. Um, might be better. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm changing it to that anyway. And that basically concludes the video. I don't know if that made any sense, but I was going to talk about maximizing the performance for. Sweden, that is again the, the top speed, excuse me, my throat's getting dry, is that in order to go the fastest on the stage, you need to be able to reach the highest top speed, and this is basically the highest top speed the car can go with these limited gear ratios. And that's it. Till the next one.